Good afternoon. It's Jeremy. It's Thursday, November the 24th. And today I want to talk um, some more about OFDM. As you know, I'm interested in OFDM. I guess the reason being is that presently um, for email and HF data communications uh, for mobile use and let's say for, for marine, um, the Pactor modem is usually uh, the default modem, but there is a new uh, modem, uh, the Vera modem, which has come on the scene, which is an OFDM modem. So I thought I would uh, get into OFDM. Uh, in previous videos, I looked at some possible configurations for voice for OFDM and an SSB upper sideband bandwidth. And then the last couple of uh, videos, I've looked at uh, messaging using OFDM. So in the previous video, I concentrated on uh, the OFDM using uh, IFFT. Um, I looked at the transmitter. And in this uh, video, I want to look at OFDM using the FFT on the receiver end. So here's the blog post here. Let's just look at the overall configuration here in OFDM for messaging on HF. So basically, we have data in. So in my configuration, I've got 9,600 bits per second coming in. Uh, and then you go to a serial to parallel channel. So let's say we had 64 channels, then we'd have 150 bits per second on each one of these parallel channels. And then we go into the IFFT. Now each, on each of these parallel channels, let's say we're using 16 QAM. So that would be um, two to the fourth. Okay, so then we would have instead of 150 bits per second, and we'd have 37.5 baud's. Okay, and going in here, we have an I and a Q channel, and the I could have a possible value of, let's say, minus 3, minus 1, 1, or 3, and then the Q could have a possible value of minus 3, minus 1, 1, and 3. So those are the, the I and Q data that would go in there. And then what happens with the IFFT is you have 64 channels here of I and Q data, and then that gives you 64, the IFFT gives you 64 samples. Uh, I and Q as well. And what you do with those 64 samples is you shift them out serially. Um, instead of an impulse for, let's say, a particular value, I oversampled it 10 times uh, to give me my effectively a D to A converter. So instead of a single pulse, I basically got a rectangular pulse for the duration from that uh, value to the next value. So that's my D to A and that goes into the channel, and then the reverse process happens over here. So we have Psychoslab code to uh, give us those random values. I'm using random values for I and Q in the transmitter, as I discussed last time. So that's a vision of the matrix. I derive a matrix um, of 40 columns. Each column contains 64 rows. So each column is essentially 64 channels worth of I and Q uh, data and the I and Q have any one of these uh, limited values for 16 QAM. And then that goes, one column at a time goes into the IFFT, and then you get 64 values uh, for the XN, the small XN, which is your IFFT. That's um, a picture showing you the real uh, part of XN, and that's the imaginary part of, F, uh, of XN. That's over the 40 columns worth. So you take one column, calculate the IFFT, shift it out serially, and then the next column comes in, IFFT, shift that out at the end, etc. That's the vision of the transmitter. So that's the real XN that goes and it's multiplied by cos omega CT. Omega C for the, uh, USS, uh, for the USB would be at 1500 hertz. The bandwidth would be from 300 to 2700 hertz, 1500 being right in the middle. And uh, there's a sign. Now, for, for convenience, I've taken 10 kilohertz just so you can see the spectrum better. If it's at 1500 uh, hertz, it's hard to see the spectrum. I'm not doing any pulse shaping here. Um, when you shift these pulses out serially, they take up the whole 2400 hertz bandwidth. So really in reality, you'd have to shape the pulses, let's say with a raised cosine filter, something like that, um, <clears throat> to get a good spectrum. So there's the transmit spectrum, as you can see, it's centered at 10 kilohertz, and you've got nulls at the data rate on either side. So there's 10 kilohertz plus 2.4 kilohertz minus 2.4 kilohertz. Again, with pulse shaping, you'd get rid of all these uh, sidebands, and you'd flatten that out. That's the output of the um, 
of the OFDM. You can see it has a, a, a huge pulse a peak to average ratio there. That's the XN uh, on the I, and that's the XN on the Q. And the width of one of these um, uh, samples is, um, turns out to be, I think it's 0.4 milliseconds, something like that. Okay, so there's uh, 64 of these samples in um, uh, one, uh, uh, one baud time. Okay, so that's the transmitter. So let's look at the receiver. Um, there's the receiver. So the transmitter output goes into a structure here called A3. And then A3 feeds the receiver. So you regenerate, uh, you want to get back your Xn. So we multiply by cosine on the I branch. We multiply by sine on the uh, Q branch. This gives us a DC value times Xn real. And this gives us a DC value times uh, Xn imaginary, plus a double frequency component. So the low pass filter gets rid of the double frequency component. And then to have a good signal recovery, you integrate over the sample time. Um, and then you sample and hold. Just before the end of that sample time, you sample and hold. So um, after you've um, inserted the carrier, you can see that the X and spectrum has shifted down to baseband. And then we've there's the double frequency component, which has really been knocked down by the low pass filter. That's my recovered I. That's my recovered Q. It's delayed by one bit time because I'm sampling at the end of the uh, sample time. And you can see that they, these uh, um, Xn are exactly the same as these Xn. And then, um, then um, what we have to do now that we've received our Xn at the receiver, we want to go into an FFT. So there's some more psychoslab code to give you the FFT. There's my transmit XN, there's my receive XN. You can see there's some slight differences here. Remember, we were building this in kind of analog software in a sense. There's my received XK, so after the FFT, that's what I get. So what was transmitted was, let's say, a minus three and a minus one, a three and a one. You can see there's some slight um, noise there. There's my receive constellation. As I say, there's some slight discrepancies here. Not a lot. I haven't any added any noise to the channel. It's just the analog nature of the um, of the simulation. And then down here, this is my transmit constellation. And what I've done here is I've used a round function. So I've rounded off. Um, I've rounded off all these values, and I get a perfect uh, constellation. Let's just quickly look at the uh, software. So there's the Psychoslab software to generate on the transmit end. I execute it. So that's my XN that I get. That's a plot of the real and the imaginary XN for all the 40 columns. I'll just close that. This takes a while to calculate all this. When this goes blue, I'm ready. So then I'll load Psychos, the Modnum toolbox, load Psychos. I'm going to open my transmitter. I've got various transmitters here uh, with various types of filters and stuff like that. We'll just take, just pick the uh, the basic transmitter. So there's my basic transmitter. Okay, so the uh, real XN comes in here, the imaginary XN multiplied by cosine and sine. So I'll just run the simulation. Forty columns of data um, take about 1.1 second to get a spectrum. I didn't really need 40 columns. It turns out I only needed about 12. But anyways, just let it run for a sec. Again, you can see our sine x over x spectrum at 10 kilohertz. There's no filtering of the pulses, which in reality you should do. Should do. So that's my OFD output. You can see it's got a a big pulse to average, a peak to average ratio. Let's look at the beginning here to see what the data looked like. So I'll just focus in in here a little bit. That's my OFDM output. That's my I, XN, and that's my Q, XN imaginary. Okay, so those are the uh, transmit. On the receive end, 
I'll open up the receiver. Again, I've got various receivers there depending on different filters and different types of processing. So there's my receiver. The transmitted OFDN comes in here on a structure. I regenerate the uh, XM while I'm reinserting the carriers. The low pass filters are used to get rid of the double frequency components. I integrate over the sample time and I reset the integrator at the end of the sample time. Um, if you go through the math, you'll see that after you integrate, you've got XN divided by two times TB. So I just inverse that. So I get an, a, a, a viewable output and then I do a sample and hold just before the end of the sample time. So let's look at that. Again, this will take about a second to run. There's the um, baseband spectrum of H H XN, and you can see that the double frequency component of 20K has been knocked down by at least 20 dB. Okay, now the output of the receiver here goes to two structures, A4 and A5. So now what we'll do is we've got some more um, Psychos Lab code here. And this code now will take the A4 and the A5 and create the FFT and create the constellation. So let's run that. So that's my receive constellation. You can see that there's some slight discrepancies there. There's my transmit constellation. I can change the axes here to make this look good. Uh, let's do that on the receive end. So what I've done here is uh, I've used the round function on here to uh, round off. Let's say if it's minus 3.05, then that becomes minus 3, etc. So I've rounded it off. If you want to look at this differently, you can go into edit current axes properties and go from minus 4 four and then on y do the same thing and therefore and then that's your constellation there it just shows better when you've got plus or minus four and you can see a perfect constellation there when I when I did the round function so that's the OFDM receive uh, so now we've looked at a 64 channel system IFFT with FFT what I find interesting is, you know, when you do the discrete model, each discrete modulator has its own little spectrum. When you do the IFFT, what happens is you take your 64 channels of I and Q, and then the IFFT creates 64 samples, but those samples now take up the whole bandwidth. In other words, they're sort of like a, an infinite level ASK taking up the whole channels. It's kind of like a reversal of roles.